so now we've talked through the different channels and we'll get into more strategy in the next set of video lectures. But right now I want to briefly talk about the fact that almost all these platforms and all these channels provide you with the ability to track analytics. Uh, so Facebook has Facebook Insights, YouTube and Twitter have their own analytics. And then even when they don't, you can try and track some of what's going on using URL shorteners. So for instance, on your web page, right, you could have a link to your Instagram channel, but you could actually code that link via a, um, a URL shortener so you can see that people have clicked from that particular page or that particular promotion to your Instagram account, right? That allows you to kind of track over time where people are getting. And we'll talk about those details uh, in a little bit when we get into some of the more details of of uh, tactics of social media and uh, what's going on there. You also should think a little bit about, especially in the space of your uh, own social media and earn social media on your own pages, what is the, are the community guidelines going to be? So you're going to create this public forum, this Facebook page, right? And it's not really your company's location. It's not really your user's location. It's some middle ground where your company and your users come together, right? You're creating that middle ground when you create that Facebook page. You should create guidelines for how that space should be respected by the users, both by you and by the, by the community, right? You want to set the tone for the community. If you want to write, if you want it to be humor, write humorously, right? If you want it to be um, very serious and in depth, then write serious and in depth. But the other thing you should do is actually set strict guidelines for what those kinds of content should be like, right? Establish guidelines for what kinds of behavior will not be tolerated. A common one is not to tolerate any kind of disparaging behavior towards another member of the community, right? Um, you also want to describe what kinds of conversations you want to see. If you want to if you want to encourage critiques of your company, then say so, right? If you want to encourage conversations about new products and new features, then say so, right? Try and make sure those guidelines are set out ahead of time, right? It's important to have those guidelines set out because if they are, then it's easier to enforce them once it becomes a problem, right? So if, if you need to remove a certain post and you have a guideline that that post is violating, then it becomes very easy to justify it to the community. On the other hand, if you're just arbitrarily removing posts, that becomes much harder to, to justify to the community. You should also think about what the advantages of social media are, right? Um, and decide whether or not they are, they're going to help you do what you want to do. One is that they provide a constant and never-ending source of consumer insight. Because you're allowing people to share this content, they provide you with insight into what they're interested in and what they want. You can also provide relevant and targeted messaging, right? Because now you can divide your community, your, your target market into smaller and smaller niches, depending upon which pieces of content they might like to see, right? Because you could maybe put certain content on Facebook, but not on Twitter, because you know your Twitter following is different than your Facebook following. On the other hand, even for a small brand, I have the potential to reach really large audiences, right? If I write just the right piece of advertising that's really clever and really interesting, I have the possibility to kind of go viral, if you will, and that could really turn out to my advantage without having a large amount of money being spent on my part because it doesn't cost me any more money to have 100 people see a YouTube video as it does to see a million people see a YouTube video, right? It cost me the amount of money to create the video in the first place, but that's about it. Right? Other than that, it doesn't cost me any more money, depending upon how that message gets spread. In the end, one way you want to think about one of the advantages of social media is that it allows you to turn the funnel, the traditional marketing funnel that we think about, right? The, the, where we, we think about all the people who have some interest, and then eventually they make a decision, and they take an action, they make a purchase from us, right? Into a megaphone, right? So it takes that funnel and flips it sideways. It's a, a metaphor that Seth Godin likes to promote, right? Where you turn your consumers into advocates. And what we mean by that is after they've made the purchase, right, now you can encourage them to go back on social media and talk about what a great purchase it was, right? And hopefully through that way, you can really get additional advertising and the best kind of advertising because it's coming from your consumers and not from you. And a lot of the advertising research we know shows that those consumers' voices are much more important than uh, the corporate voice that you're broadcasting. However, it's not all fun and games. There's a lot of challenges to social media. 
you can't control it. You shouldn't even try to control it. You can merely try and guide it the way you want. And in fact, controlling it can backfire. If you delete a bunch of posts, if you try and remove content that's up there, right? people can react very negatively to that and actually have a negative reaction against what you're saying. You have to be constantly on social media. There's no breaks from social media. You can't simply stop posting for a while uh, because of the fact that you don't want to, right? You need to be constantly updating, constantly active, or else people think it's a dead channel and they're gonna go away from it, right? You're gonna lose a lot of the people on that. Uh, privacy can be an issue. You need to think carefully about what you wanna do with content that your users and consumers are putting up there, um, how you're gonna interact with it. Um, you wanna you know, be smart, but not scary is kind of the rule of thumb, right? If you see a certain individual, you think, hey, I have a great solution for them. I have a way that I can interact with them. And they're not interacting with you um, right now. You have to think about how you should best address them. So for instance, Say someone's searching for um, a particular uh, plane flight that they want, right? And you know, uh, because you're smart searching for various keywords, that your airline can provide that flight. They want a direct flight from, say, Raleigh-Durham to Nashville, right? Is it appropriate for you to just tweet at them, hey, I saw you're searching for your friends for this flight. We have that flight available, right? For some consumers, that's fine. For others, it's not. That should be considered on a regular basis as to whether or not you can, you, are, you should approach individuals in that space. Negative virality is always also possible, right? You can get a reputation for doing things improperly. Uh, speaking of plane flights, you know, there's a classic example about of United Breaks Guitars where um, a singer-songwriter broke wrote a song about what he thought, what he, what he experienced where United broke one of his guitars and didn't feel, it feel, felt like he didn't, they didn't compensate him correctly for it. That, that video took off, right? And so just as well as positive virality is important, negative virality is also important. It's important to address that. Uh, I always want to end today by talking a little bit about a couple of examples where I thought this you can't control it, you can merely guide it kind of sentiment really comes out. Uh, so this is an example that happened just recently, about a week ago, where Wendy's uh, posted uh, as kind of on their um, own social media content, on their own feed, our beef is way too cool to ever be frozen, right? And a responder named, a Twitter user named Thuggy responded, your beef is frozen, we all know it. You all know we laugh at your slogan, fresh never frozen, right? Like, really, you're really a joke, right? Like, trying to take him down. And so Wendy's has a couple of options at this point. They could just not respond to this content, right? They could just let it go. Chances are no one would ever see it again, right? Like, the, the, um, this user probably doesn't have many followers. Who knows what's going to happen? Instead, Wendy's decided to respond to it, right? And say, sorry to hear you think that, but you're wrong. We've only ever used Fresh Bees since we were founded in 1969, right? And, and this is, this is kind of a, a standard kind of tepid response, right? Basically saying, no, I'm sorry to correct it. And a lot of firms do this. They take this kind of approach to it. And Thuggy D continues the conversation and says, so you deliver it raw in a hot truck? Um, and, and Wendy's now gets a little cheeky. And this is something that was potentially a little dangerous, but worked out in the end. They said, where do you store cold things that aren't frozen? <laughs> and, and obviously indicating that they don't deliver on a hot truck, they deliver in a refrigerated truck, right? And Thuggy D says, y'all should give up. McDonald's uh, got you guys beat, right? Um, and Wendy's responds, you don't have to bring them into this just because you forgot refrigerators existed for a second there, right? Uh, and this kind of blew up on social media. They got retreated quite a bit. Um, they uh, got a lot of respect for the way they handled the situation. But I think it's a great example where they guided the conversation correctly. Now, it could have turned out poorly for them, right? It could have been one of the reasons, ways when the, uh, social media is dangerous is that, you know, they don't, you don't want to be seen as beating up someone on social media, being a bully on social media. They tried to figure out a way to kind of play this both ends, uh, and I think they did it very well. They navigated this kind of uh, dilemma very easily. Another classic example that I always like to bring up is Old Spice and Taco Bell who um, kind of got into a little bit of a, of a fight on Twitter, uh, a little bit provoked by Old Spice, right? Where Old Spice said, why is it the fire sauce isn't made with any real fire? Seems like false advertising, right? And I love this conversation because Taco Bell actually responds, right? And says, uh, Old Spice is your deodorant made with really old spices, saying that that's also false advertising a little bit, right? 
And, and Old Spice came back one more time to say, it depends. Do you consider volcanoes, tanks, and freedom to be spices, right? I love this. It kind of goes back and forth. They're fighting for the message. They're each buying. I honestly don't think either one had a lot to lose here, right? The best they could do is kind of try and attract people who are interested in their particular brands. They don't even compete with each other. So really, there was, this is a win-win situation for both. Uh, by the way, Rocketfish, uh, another a tech company, got in and said, before you guys get us all in trouble, we want to clarify that our products contain neither rockets nor fish, right? So um, this is kind of a great example of using social media to provide some humor, some interest, while making sure that you have some brand awareness and some brand interest going in. Both of these are on message to some extent, right? Like you know, Old Spice is consistently trying to play itself off as being a little bit more provocative brand recently. Uh, and so this kind of provides them the ability to play in that arena. Okay, that's it for social media channels. There's tons more examples I could get into here, uh, but we'll try and sprinkle those throughout the rest of the course. Uh, and with that, uh, we're done for this uh, particular topic.